Well, I mean, let's just start with the fact we have a very good economy, and that's great, but one of the side effects of a good economy is very congested roadways uh, all around the state, but particularly in the metropolitan area. So we've got issues that have to be addressed. So at the federal level, um, one of the things that I'd hoped would occur was that as part of that big tax package that was passed earlier this year, there would be an infrastructure bank that as we gave a tax holiday to some of the big companies that have placed their money or parked their money overseas, if we gave them a tax holiday, that would be used, that money that came back would be used as an infrastructure bank to help the federal government work with state and local governments to, you know, for roads and bridges, for waterworks, for the electrical grid, and for broadband. Didn't happen. So I think one of the first things, though, we expect is to have a big infrastructure package to assist the states so that we can be competitive for the next 50 years. And that's going to be multimodal. It's going to be roads and bridges. It will be a lot of waterworks. And I think from our point of view, the, to assist the RTD, to a, assist CDOT is going to be very important for us to deal with this side effect that we have of a good economy, that being congested roadways. I think the other thing, uh, obviously the, the state has some initiatives. So we as a, as a state ourselves want to deal with transportation issues that we face. And one of them I think is very positive. Uh, let's go Colorado, I think it's 110. And I certainly am supportive of that. We need to invest in our roads and bridges uh, to continue to have the good economy that we have. There's a second one that basically takes from Peter to pay Paul um, that I think is uh, really misguided and I'm going to oppose that. So again, we enjoy a very good economy uh, which means there are a lot of jobs. And so you start with, you want a lot of jobs. You want a diverse kind of a job sector. And we have that in Colorado. High tech, financial services, uh, we have aerospace, we have computers, electronics, you name it. And that's very good. What we see is it's an employee's market right now because we have more jobs out there, especially up here in the Northwest part of the metropolitan area, just 3,000 among Amazon and uh, Gaylord and you know a couple of the other major projects up here. So how do you address that? Well, first it's, it's an education issue to make sure that people have the right skills and the right education, the right training for the jobs that are out there. And there are many high tech sort of math driven kinds of things. So we gotta make sure uh, that that's available through either the community college system, K through 12, a company like Galvanize, which does a lot of training in that area. We need to use apprenticeships and internships so that folks can really get uh, involved with a particular occupation, a particular industry, and be great uh, for that business that wants to hire them. I think we need to uh, continue to have consistent funding for workforce training coming from the Department of Labor at the federal level to the Department of uh, Labor here at the state, uh, both to make sure everybody can either get a new certificate or have a lifelong learning uh, type of an experience so that they can grow as technology changes. And that involves certainly our community college system, which up here in sort of the Metro North area, we've got great community colleges in Red Rocks and Front Range to again address uh, places where there's huge demand for employment. The skills may not match perfectly, but with that kind of training and uh, education, we can make them fit. So the good news is high demand for people with good skills. Uh, bad news is we gotta make sure people are trained today and that they have the ability for lifelong learning to always be ready for what change is coming. So in terms of tax incentives, uh, if we can uh, attract uh,
good employers who have uh, good paying jobs and a real you know, future that they bring with them to our state, I'm always going to be supportive of that. We want to make sure that the small businesses you know, aren't left in the dust and that we continue to provide opportunities for them and, and make sure that they've got you know, good internet and good roads and the basics for them to succeed. But I certainly would support incentives to continue to attract great employers uh, to the region because you know cycles come and go and right now we've had a strong economy running for a number of years here in in Colorado things will slow down we want to continue to attract uh, good companies uh, so that we don't go into a deep trough where people are being laid off so that's number one number two uh, burdensome regulations uh, you always want to uh, eliminate things that are duplicative, that you got to do the same thing for seven different jurisdictions. And to the degree we can eliminate that and have it more regional in nature, or there's a, you know, one permit for the state, you don't have to get 20 permits for jurisdictions, that's good for business. Uh, eliminate some of that redundancy. And I certainly want to uh, see that happen. Now, um, we enjoy Colorado a great way of living. I mean, this is, people come here, we live here, we raise our families here, because it's a great place to live. We love our outdoors, we love our open space, we love our public lands and our mountains. And so, you know, there is a balance between sort of environmental regulations, uh, some zoning regulations, and what, uh, and why we live here. And it, that's the test for you know, business leaders, labor leaders, political leaders to find that balance. Because you don't want to have a place that you know, has no regulation and you killed the goose that laid the golden egg because folks don't want to live here anymore. But you also want to have a very appealing uh, place for businesses to succeed. The last thing you asked me about was sort of oil and gas development. There are a couple ballot issues uh, that have been uh, approved that will be on this uh, fall's ballot. Uh, one is setbacks 2,500 feet from the nearest occupiable building or something like that. I oppose that. There's a second one that is just as dangerous, and that is this one that says, if you blink wrong, it's a taking. And so if a a uh, municipality, a uh, local government, the state says, wait a second, we need to have some limitations on how many units you can put per acre, or we've got to, you know, kind of modify how you want to conduct your business. You don't want every time that there is some kind of effort to bring some order and balance to have that be a taking for which we as citizens then have to compensate. So there again is balance. That's why you, you try to vote for and select good leaders uh, at you know, the city level, the county level, the state and federal level who recognize the balance uh, that comes uh, between good regulation and over the top, you've, you've brought everything to a halt kind of regulation. Well, I'm going to start with uh, the Affordable Care Act, and, and health care is a big issue at the door. It might, it's a big issue for businesses and employers. It certainly is a big issue for employees and just the individual, you know, Mrs. McGillicuddy who lives down at the end of the block. I mean, health care is a, is a major cost to all of us. So I supported and I continue to support the Affordable Care Act and in particular because that covers people with pre-existing conditions. And from my point of view, that one really is a civil right. Uh, if you've been, if you were born with epilepsy or some kind of a, an illness or um, disability like that, it's through no fault of your own. And I want to make sure that those people continue to be able to get coverage. Uh, the Republican Congress has continued to try to whittle away with, at that, repeal it, and I think that's a mistake, and that's taking away a basic civil right uh, that we finally recognize for all the people in this country. 
obviously it's got issues and we've got to make sure that if we bring in a lot of folks who have high costs um, because of disabilities or illnesses or things like that, we need to have this uh, approach that doesn't just sock it to the insurance companies at that point or the medical providers, but that we, we assist them taking in a bigger population of folks who may have illnesses or, or disabilities. So I, I support that. I don't support any of the efforts to repeal uh, the Affordable Care Act. I have a particular bill that I've uh, introduced on transparency in healthcare pricing. And that's good and, good and bad. Some, some providers that say, no, you know, everything is very different and we really can't give you a price, you know, for a knee operation or, you know, a hip operation or something like that. But I think uh, many providers are prepared to give the consumer, the patient, a better idea of what they're going to have to pay or their insurance company is going to have to pay before they have uh, the particular procedure done. So I've got a bill uh, for that and I think uh, the consumers, the patients, will, uh, in Colorado we've already done that at the legislative level, but at the federal level uh, we've been very reluctant to have this transparency in healthcare pricing and I'm carrying this bill with Republican uh, Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin, uh, the two of us have been working hard to hopefully make uh, headway on this. Well, you know, Colorado's been very good to the Perlmutter family. And particularly this part of town has uh, really allowed us to have the opportunity to succeed, to, to draw upon talented people and a great place to live, great public education to you know succeed in business to succeed as families and my goal as a representative of the people of the seventh congressional district is to hopefully continue uh, the opportunity that my family has uh, been able to um, find and take advantage of and it comes through you know a talented workforce we talked about that a little bit. We've got to make sure we maintain talented workforce. It comes from good employers who are here for the long run and want to, you know, make the best products possible or provide the best services possible. And it's keeping our environment, the place we live, you know, probably the best place on the planet to raise a family. So my job is to continue to provide opportunity, a good place for people to live, and as best I can to assist both K through 12 as well as higher institutions of higher learning, whether it's trade schools or community colleges or, or our universities, to make sure that those things are available and are available for all of the people so that they can succeed, they can succeed and have an opportunity to prosper in our wonderful state. I notice you get, get a little emotional. Uh, I do, because, you know, you, that's something that goes to your core. You know, why do you do public service? And, you know, this state's been great to us. This country's been great. And you want to maintain that and improve it where you can. That's why I'm running for office again. And that's why I want the votes of the people that are listening to your tape.